<sighs> My shift hasn't started yet. Try that guy. Oh, that guy right there? Yeah. Right, thank you. <sighs> A lot's been going on around here the last two weeks. Turk and Carla got married. That short guy hurt his hand. And since I totally broke Elliot's heart, I was still trying to smooth things over. Hey, buddy. What's with the giant needle? <laughs> We still had some work to do. Where was I? Oh yeah, the hospital also had a new attending psychiatrist. Dr. Molly Clock. This is a really windy hospital. Oh, I'm sorry. I was uh, drying up a patient's urine. Hmm. I'm, I'm kind of a favorite around here. Not only was Dr. Clock easy on the eyes, but apparently she was an excellent shrink. Mr. Whitcomb is in the middle of a psychotic break from self-discontinuation of his meds, so we need to get him on haloperidol IV stat. But I had also heard she was a little spacey. So where were we? Um, we weren't talking. Was it because of something you did? Because I'm totally over it. I don't even remember what it was. No, I mean, like, we've never talked. Ever. How do I know your name, then? You don't. You're freaking me out, Jimmy. It's Johnny. Why would you say Johnny? You hate Johnny. I'm going to commit it to my memory forever. Johnny, Johnny, Johnny. Damn it, damn it, damn it! Okay, Johnny. Damn it. I'm sorry, just meeting so many people, and everyone's kind of clickish, and I haven't really gotten to know anybody. So let's talk. I'm not like I'm going anywhere, right? Great. Oh, thanks. Okay. Excuse me. Turk's back from his honeymoon! Nice to meet you. Turk! Ah! Go ahead. Johnny! Maybe someday he'll love me like that. He's here! Turk! The newlyweds. Oh, and uh, hey, Carla. Mark my words, the first year of marriage is just a real treat. Sweetheart, do you remember ours? <laughs> this silly fighting for control. You broke my jaw. You gotta stop that back talk early. Come on, Glassjaw. Duck and move, Gundy. Here it is, here it is. Watch it. Oh, duck and move. Ignore him, baby. We have a great relationship. Nothing's gonna change. Over the next few days, Carla started to change everything. Hey, dude, get us some more ice cream. First of all, this is a rice stream. Mmm, ricey. Secondly, I can't get out of these new chairs she got. Am I using it right? These bowls called about don't hold a lot of rice cream. I can barely get my spoon in it. Look. Hey, JD, although we do appreciate the wedding gift, <laughs> Turk and I decided we don't want the Sugar Hill Gang alarm clock. We don't? I got it. Oh, I got it. I'm okay. No. Oh, here it is. <laughs> oh, ah! I'm still in the chair. I, it, it's like a bear trap. <laughs> As I fondled Katya, my pillow girlfriend, I thought about how things had changed for all of us. You see, I had almost forgotten that when I wake up, it'll be the start of my last week as a resident. I said a hip hop, the hip the hip the hip hip hop, you don't stop. Rock it to the bang bang, book it to the up, jump the book it to the rhythm of the book it to And now what you hear is not a dream, so listen up your happy head. Yo, hear my rhyme, it's wake up time to get your white ass out of bed. You see, I am what... I can't do this all, all night. Oh, no, I know. I'm no Superman. I'm no Superman. Don't look at me, it just fell. Please, 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 please. Proceed unmolested. I knew he'd buy it, because today feels like one of those great days in the hospital. People really seem to be getting to know each other. Bob, 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 Bob. Fantastic. Get off my face. My last week of residency had begun. In seven days, I'd be a full-fledged doctor. It felt pretty special to me, and I had a hunch it meant a lot to one other person as well. Yes, my lady. So? You feeling all like... Ah! That depends, does I mean confused and incredibly annoyed? Come on, man, it's our last week together. The JD and Cox train is pulling into the station. You must have a metaphor you want to use. Hit me with it. I suppose I could riff a list of things that I care as little about as our last week together. Let me see. Uh, Low-carb diet. Michael Moore. The Republican National Convention. Kabbalah and all Kabbalah-related products. 
Hi, Def TV, the Bush Daughters, Wireless Hotspots, the OC, the UN, Recycling, Getting Punk, Danny Gans, the Latin Grammys, the Real Grammys, Jeff, that wiggle who sleeps too darn much, the Yankees payroll, all the red states, all the blue states, every hybrid car, every talk show host, everything on the planet, everything in the solar system, everything, 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 everything that exists, past, present, and future, and all discovered and undiscovered dimensions. Oh, and Hugh Jackman. Hmm. Hugh Jackman's Wolverine. How dare he? I miss you guys so much. Mm. Oh, come over tonight. We're looking at wedding pictures. This is one picture of me right after I got sick off my third champagne and Red Bull. And my hair is kind of like sexy messy. And the photographer said he could airbrush all of the puke off my dress. Already made doubles. You rock. <laughs> so, um, is JD going to be there tonight? Can't you come over anyway? Um, hey, do you guys mind if I eat with you? Because I don't want to sit alone and sing to my food like a crazy person. Oh my gosh, I do that. No way. Mostly pop songs. You know, unless I'm eating soul food. Where's your food? Oh, shoot. Look, Elliot, we'll do something later this week, just the two of us. Okay. Oh, that is not my food. But I'm not getting up again. Oh, I wouldn't. Chicken salad. Oh, yeah. Looks good. I gotta go. See ya. It's so strange feeling all alone when, like, a month ago I was part of this really tight group, you know? Yeah. I had tons of friends at my old hospital. I gotta meet some new people. Do you wanna, uh, get a cup of coffee tonight? Can't. I'm hitting the internet hard and going on a friend hunt. Oh, chicken salad. You're tasty. Your food to be eaten. It's good. When you get back from surgery, Mrs. Grodberg, we'll play Scrabble again. And this time I'll beat you. Well, of course you'll beat her, son. She's having half her brain removed. <laughs> Jitty, a little problem this morning with Malik. Our car? Is it bad? Oh. Hey, AAA. Look, I need to pick up one in the corner of 4th and... Uh... You know what? You'll see it. Ah, Malik. Lots of memories in that old car. Of what? Driving, mostly. Beep, beep. Look, why don't we pull our money together and buy one of those nice, cute little Mini Coopers? Maybe a Mini Cooper. And then the most amazing thing happened. I'll tell you what, Turk. Why don't you go pick out a car? Carla, let Turk make a decision. Okay. Well, baby, you should know that's not going to be a Mini. Because ain't nothing really Mini about me. There isn't. There isn't! <laughs> Mr. Radford, if you keep turning down physical therapy, you're never going to be strong enough to get out of this bed. I'm tired. I know you are, but I would love it if you at least try. And I would do anything for love, but I won't do that. No, I won't do that. Hunting. Drink your juice, Mr. Blass. Mr. Glass has Pick's disease, which is similar in presentation to multi-infarct dementia. Mm. Anywho, he likes to sing when he gets up in the morning, and the weird thing is, Johnny, he actually captures the mood of the room. Okay, you gotta take a stand on this Johnny thing before it becomes permanent. You know what, it's JD for John Dorian. So, so John, you know what, Johnny's fine, it's cool. What's wrong with you? Anyway, Johnny, I was noticing that you were having some trouble motivating your patient back in there, and I actually published a paper on motivation methodology in post-operative seniors, so if you want, I could help. What floor? Oh my god, we're on an elevator. You know, Molly, I appreciate the offer, but there's a very special doctor I use around here when I need help, and he'd be pretty pissed if I didn't come to him first. Why, Mariska? Why do you insist on bothering me with these things? Please, you know you love it. Now, come on, one more time for nostalgia's sake. You come see my patient, you teach me a lesson, and then the music plays, right? In my head, it sounds like this. ba 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 Dr. Cox, can I borrow you for a minute? Borrow me. Dear heart, you'll be rescuing me. Newbie, you're on your own. Get used to it. to you when my first year of marriage isn't going to be as hard as yours was. You're setting the bar a little low on that one there, sweet cheeks. Yeah, still, the point is I'm smarter than you. In relationships? In everything. Right. See, even though I make all the decisions, when I see Stark is getting upset, I throw him a little decision that means nothing to me. Like buying a new car. As long as it's got four wheels and air conditioning, I'm happy. Check it, baby. Scooters. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> He's a drinker. <laughs> Clever. Look, did he... I think this is so unfair. I mean, I never even get to see Turk and Carl anymore. It's like we got divorced and then you get to keep a friend just because you live with them. It just feels like you guys are part of some sort of gang or something. Elliot, you're overreacting. We're not some kind of gang, okay? Okay. Wolverines, let's roll! That joyride around the hospital made me realize two things. First, it's a bad idea to take a full bladder out on your hog. Also, I had to draw upon all my medical experience to get Mr. Radford out of bed. Mr. Radford, they're showing Cocoon in the chapel!
I'm not a big Gutenberg fan. Well, you're the only one because people in the hall are going crazy. Akbar, Akbar, Akbar. Oh, Johnny. Hey. Don't know where it's me. I was just looking at Mr. Radford's chart. Ah, uh, I know you're new here, but that's my patient chart, and no one touches my patient's chart except for him. Yes, I knew he couldn't stay away. Hi, I'm Molly, and I kind of tagged in here with the Mr. Radford thing because. Molly, Molly, Molly. You lost me at hello. Wow, no touchy. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, Mr. Radford, do I understand that you have pain issues, but you don't want physical therapy? I just don't have it in me. Here comes the magic. He always gives me goosebumps. Okay, then. I sure hope you're comfortable in that bed, because you're going to be in one just like it for the rest of your natural-born life. What the hell was that? That was me talking to a patient who has thrown in the towel. You can't save everyone, newbie, so I suggest you start working with people who want your help. That's what I will be doing. Goosebumps? They're small. You, you can't see them. <laughs> Jizzlebeck is not a word. I'm still beating you. Well, I'm just glad your surgery went okay and you still have your A game. I don't really care who wins. Half a brain, damn it. Good night, Giselle. Dr. Cox. I just want you to know I'm not ready to give up on Mr. Radford. Do you want me to give you my things I don't care about speech again? Because you know I've updated it to include all white guys who add Izzle to anything. I grizzle my nizzle. Go on home and get in bed, will you? I'm betting your friend Mr. Radford's already in his. I see you. Oh, sweetheart, you're here early. Yeah, well, you know, I didn't have any plans last night, so I went to bed at 8, and then I woke up at 4, and then I realized that the sunrise just looks beautiful through the trees, and that my neighbor gets his paper in the nude, and then he needs to lose, like, 900 pounds. In the future, the appropriate response is, yes, I am here early. It's called small talk, not my depressing life in 30 seconds. I am not depressed, sir. In fact, nothing is going to get me down today. <laughs> All by myself. Don't want to be all by Oh, shut up. Did you just tell my patient to shut up? Because that seems not very doctory. No? I mean, I said it like all those high school girls do in the mall, like, oh, shut up. <laughs> I should go. Hmm. Kick it, Mr. Glass. Oh, Why the giant X? Why the stupid face? Touche. You know, I know you knocked that exit sign down. Well, I'm sure I can expect an appropriate retaliatory response. Maybe you could shoot me in the neck. <laughs> Sounds like fun, but no. Our game is over, buddy. Your residency's coming to a close, and that's it. Nothing left to do, but... What can I say? It's been horrifying. Thank you. Well, this is kind of cool. Maybe, you know, maybe we could, like, be friends. You like hunting squirrels? I'd never tried it. Easiest thing in the world. All you need is some walnuts and a boxing glove. And the day just got better from there. Mostly because Mr. Radford had the same screw you, Dr. Cox attitude that I had. Good stuff, Mr. Radford. I'm proud of you. Thank you. Excuse me, doctor. I dropped a nickel in that therapy whirlpool. You think you could get it for me? Okay, but stand back. These things can be pretty dangerous. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Sacred Heart calendar out here? Actually, no. I almost drowned diving for a nickel. But I'm sure you're more interested in conspiracy theories about gangs and friends stealing. Peace out. <laughs> hey, why did you kick my scooter? Why? All you Americans are bullies. That is why the whole world hates you. Easy, Massimo. It's okay. She's going to fix it. Just go inside and I'll meet you in my office. Uh, He's not even Italian. I'm sorry. Look, um, you wouldn't understand. No, I get it. I mean, you're feeling lonely. You're feeling rejected. I mean, most people around here won't even talk to me. And even Johnny won't take my help. Who's Johnny? Yeah, he's a resident. He's got, like, gelled up hair. And he and his friends are in a motorcycle gang. I knew it! You know what, Elliot? You act like everyone's boxing you out, but you wouldn't even get a cup of coffee with me. Peace out, baby. Why is everybody saying that? Great news, baby. I just picked the pass up from the airport. Not only did I get them home, I lost six pounds. <laughs> Give me those stupid keys. Mm -mm. 
That's what I think of your scooters. No more bugs in my teeth. No more helmet head. No more making deals with God every time a truck passes me on the freeway, okay? It's over. That's it. What the hell just happened? You got married, Turkleton. <laughs> that, my friends, is Mr. Radford getting out of bed. <sighs> and that's Mr. Radford falling back into bed. But still, enough to rub it in Dr. Cox's face. That is so great. But I wouldn't do that unless you wanted him to rub your face in it. Did you not see what just happened, or do you not get face rubbing? Because it's more than just a bizarre way to memorize people's names. Johnny, I mean, what Dr. Cox did was classic reverse psychology. And so is this. Behavioral modification can sometimes be brought about through classic conditioning. Reverse psychology? Nothing? Because that really kills at the psychiatric conferences. I must go to one of those. Look, isn't it possible that Dr. Cox tricked you as a motivational ploy? Hmm, no. After you said there was no hope with Mr. Radford, didn't you both work harder? No, you're like a crazy person. Look, I'll tell you something else. I mean, Dr. Cox is a textbook closed-off alpha male. I mean, you can try forever, but you're never going to get that hug that you really want. Oh, excuse me, I'm not a child. I'm a doctor. And I'll get that hug. Hey, watch it! Oh, I, um... Brought coffee. Oh, it's burning. It's like fire. <laughs> Baby, I know you don't want to return the scooters. Can't this wait till after my scooter club's fall foliage trip to Maine? No, Tur! <laughs> Look, you're a husband now. When you make decisions, you're supposed to think about what we need, not what you want. Well, it doesn't seem like you're doing that. You gave away my clock, and you sold my chairs, and what the hell is up with these ridiculously tiny bowls? They're sake cups, Jethro. I knew that. Everything I do, Turk, I do it for us. Oh, yeah? Then why does Rowdy smell like daisies? Because I had him filled with potpourri. Hmm. <laughs> You can keep the scooters. That's what I'm talking about. Marriage is going to be tricky. Yeah. Thanks. Mm. How are your thighs? They're very hot and pink. Do you want me to rub ointment on them? It's okay. Oh. Weird. Look at that. I know I smelled that odd combination of fear and baby powder. How does he know about my belly mash? Look, Dr. Cox, I know you were using reverse psychology with Mr. Radford. You do, do you? Yes, and I figured it out all by myself without anyone helping me or explaining it directly to my face or anything. Well, Nubile One, your last lesson and you didn't even need it. <laughs> Three years and it's finally over. I know what you want. I do. Come here. Oh my god, it's finally happening. Don't miss a moment. Take it all in. Ow. Good god, Fantasia. You, you don't actually think I'm done teaching you, do you? Do you not understand the only difference between today and tomorrow is that you wake up tomorrow and start coming in here and killing people that no one can say it's no big deal. He's just a resident. Instead, what they're damn sure going to be wondering is who tried to educate your sorry ass. And when that finger of blame starts pointing in my direction, I had damn sure better be in a coma from the anger stroke I suffered from the last time you tried to hug me. Oh. Oh, and, uh... Don't be late tomorrow, doctor. Whether or not you survive in a hospital is all about how you handle your relationships. All by myself. Whether it's a brand new one. All by or an old one you need to figure out all over again. Oh my God! Huh? I can't believe you did this! I see it even better than I imagined. But what about you? Oh, baby, don't worry about it. I got it covered. Check it out. I said the hip, the hip, the hip, the hip, the hip, the You don't stop the rockin' to the bang, bang. Make it say up, drop the boogie to the rhythm of the boogie to beat. What you hear is not a test of the rabbit to the beat. As for me, it was my relationships that got me through my residency. We're not done with our thing yet, are we? No. For you, it's all just beginning. The weird thing is, he was right. <laughs>